Okay, Corsoon Pocket by SSG and Matrix Games, take three. <laughs> All right, I am playing tutorial here. I'm going to grab lesson number one, I'm going to load it, and I see a top down version of the map. These are my red units over here. These are the enemy German units over here. Um, we have superimposed a hex grid. I can turn the hex grid off by either coming down. Why do I keep doing that? Not that one, this one. Um, hex grid is on, I can turn it off. Go back and it's not there. Or I can also turn on the front line. Front line is on. That's the red and blue triangles like that showing this is friendly territory to me, this is enemy territory to me, or friendly territory to the Germans. And you can also use um, keyboard buttons like H for hex grid on and off. F for front line on and off. Uh, for this perp for this tutorial, I'm going to keep the front line on and keep the hex grid on. Um, go to any hex in the on the map, any hex on the map. Right click and hold it, and get the little pop up box. Tells me the terrain and other details about the hex. All right. Uh, now I'm back on track to where I was before with take two. All right panel of nine buttons at the bottom. Right clicking uh, the mouse over button will identify it. So show combat advisor, uh, order of battle, the train CRT information, um, victory screen, map options. This is show supply gradient and show supplied net. Well, I won't talk about those two, kind of obvious. Um, all right, cl click on the hex picture representing, oh, on the left is a little bit. Click on the hex picture. No, I did it again. All right, um, find the train. There we go. Find the train CRT information and select it. Here we go. This is the train CRT screen. Up here we have a bunch of, of uh, actually down here too, so on the left of the screen we have all this different type of terrain so click on woods and all these values change for woods you get a wood CRT and all the, these uh, costs change um, so then we can look at we have mountains there's a mountain CRT marsh there's a marsh CRT forest the same there's a city and a town and then we have minor river and we have major river. Huh, where are the effects? Oh, no comment. Oh, there it is. Okay. So minor river combat. There we go. Normal half. There's the combat effects. Minor road, major road. Okay. Um, go back to our regular screen, identifying units, the military size of the units are mostly regiments and battalions with the occasional brigade and ad hoc formation included. So right there is the right there is the size indicator. This is a battalion. This is a regiment and a regiment and a battalion and a regiment, etc. What do we have over here? German battalion, battalion, battalion. All right. Um, all right, the weapon type uh, with which a unit is equipped is represented by the appropriate NATO military symbol found in the lower left of the unit icon. There it is. Armor and infantry and artillery, most common. That's what's uh, mechanized infantry. Uh, right here we have a, oops. All right, I'll, I will undo that move. I know what to do. Go like that to unselect that unit. <laughs> And go here to Armored Cavalry or Recon. Again, I'll unselect it. So those are the main types we see on the screen right now. Um, okay. Supply units do not have uh, size identifiers or NATO military symbols. Huh, so what do they look like? Um, some of the units are part of larger formations, usually divisions. These units display a divisional emblem in the upper left of the unit icon. 
So, well, it's easier to see, I think, in the Germans. But, um, huh. Um, units which do not belong to divisions have a picture of a tank or artillery piece or similar. So that's like that, I think. Um, the little arm, armor symbol there. Um, okay, selecting and deselecting units like that. Like I just did, I just selected the first armor unit. Um, unselected. I select the eight infantry, eighth infantry there. Unselected. Select the seventh infantry and the first tank destroyer unit. That's a regiment. That's a battalion. I think I can also click, yeah, that one to unselect. All right. Right click on the battlefield until you find hex 1313. Right there. There, let's try to do this one handed there. 1313, clear terrain. Um, the unit in that hex is the 1st Armor Battalion. That's shown right there. And you get all the unit information pop up there. Um, click on it to select it. All right, so select, select the 1st. Armored. All right, uh, I'm messing with my own touchpad here. That wasn't good. All right, um, click on and select. The first thing you notice is unit appears in the unit control area. Um, below the battlefield, I think that's that that area. Um, um, it is centered within a circular section of the immediately surrounding terrain. Yeah, that's got to be that right there. And now my touch pads all messed up. To the right of the circular section is a group of buttons. Wow. That's these ones. Um, all right, click on the banana binoculars. Uh, we already did that. Um, yeah. Uh, you can also press the L key. Click on the first armor battalion again. Um, to the right of the battlefield information about the first armor battalion is presented in the unit display area. That's this area over here. Uh, right click on the First Armor Battalion to bring up the battlefield pop-up. And while still holding the right, uh, geez, position the cursor over the first, um, oh, yeah, we already did that. And that's what did not work out well for me, but they're talking about this. And you go like that and you get the unit information popped up there. Um, we already did that. All right. Um, Deselect the first armor battalion. Oh, I'll use the L key and des which deselects all the units on the map. Um, look at hex 12.9. So 12.9 is probably right there. 12.9, clear terrain. All right. Uh, within the city of Eagle Point. Oh, Eagle Point. Select map um, options again. And let's turn on the, um, where is it? Uh, town names. Turn on, resume, there we go. Eagle Point is underneath there. Um, let's, let's just go all the way through it. Units are displayed, U, there we go. Units are removed, there's Eagle Point. And we can probably even remove those as well. What are they? Um, what are they? <laughs> uh, huh. Strong points? Oh, yeah, strong points. But then we have something underneath there. What are those? Mines. Minefields. Okay, so a lot of layering here. There, we, now we can finally see Eagle Point, and we can finally see um, Hex 12.9 right there. Eagle Point. Okay, let's turn all this stuff back on. Turn the minefields back on. Turn the strong points back on. Turn the 
the units back on. There we go. I think we're back to where we were before. Um, okay, so back to that one. Yep, there are two units shown on the left of this little box there. Um, yeah. Um, um, so let's go ahead and select the hex. Now we have the three infantry over here and the first anti-tank. Um, both units appear in the unit display area along with the stationary strong point. I think that's that down there, the strong point. Um, of course, in pocket, up to four units can be present in the hex. I'm, okay. Um, all right. In this case, the three infantry is selected because of the yellow um, uh, indicator there. This one's grayed out. Um, I'm going to select first anti-tank. Now they're both selected. And I can unselect. So I unselected three infantry, which moved it to the bottom and move the active first anti-tank to the top of the stack. Um, okay, now I'm going to select um, unit display area. Um, yep, move to the top of the stack. Um, to select all the units in a hex, click each yellow dot. I already did that. Um, all right, or tap the space bar. I'm going to tap the space bar and unselect three infantry. Um, deselect the hex now. So there's the hex. I can click on the binoculars there and unselect select the hex. Um, have a look at all the units. So we've got, what's unusual, we've got an artillery unit here, second artillery, that with all of its buttons and information. Got another armor, whoops. <laughs> Got to unselect it. Unselected. We've got the arm. Another armor unit here. Three armor. Unselected. All right. There's the first mechanized. Unselect it. All right. Moving units. Um, um, units in decisive battle system use different modes of locom locomotion for convenience. We have uh, divided these into four distinct categories: leg, horse, wheel, and track. Select the first armor battalion. Uh, in, in hex 1313, there it is. Um, you will notice that much of the map is now shaded. Um, to help with navigation, the area of the battlefield to which the chosen unit can move this turn remains unshaded. Um, yeah, unshaded. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the feature may be turned on or off using the button in the unit control area. Unit control area. I think it's this one. It's not that, though. It's this one. There we go. So let's, yeah, toggle dark move area or shaded move area. So toggle it on, off, on, off. Leave it on for now, but when I play, I will have that off. Um, you will notice that by moving the cursor around, over hexes, it changes to some form of animated marching soldier, except one containing the first armor battalion. Oh, whoops. L to unselect everybody, and back to first armor. Oh, yeah, I selected that one, which cycled through the units. As a matter of fact, was that is leave unit and get next one. Okay. All right, so there's marching soldier or binoculars. Um, all right, so this is interesting or important to know. Um, a green marching soldier, I guess they mean like that. Um, yeah, green outlined, okay. So the green marching soldier means the chosen unit can move to that location and can do so this turn. Um, a something means the chosen unit, there's a typo, a something, oh, talking about the red one, uh, can move to that location but will not reach it this turn. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's the red marching soldier. I think that's what they meant to say. Means the chosen unit can move to that location but will not reach it this turn. Okay. Um, 
uh, a red marching soldier and no-go icon like that one um, around the soldier means the chosen unit cannot move to that location because it contains enemy forces, illegal terrain, or no movement route can be established. Okay, an orange marching soldier. I don't think I'm going to get an orange marching soldier here. Huh. An orange marching soldier means the chosen unit cannot move to that location because it already contains the maximum number of units. So that's what I don't think I have any hexes that have the max four units. So that's why I'm not going to see the orange marching soldier. Okay, right click on the battlefield to locate hex 2011. 2011. There we go, 2011. 2011, right click on the battlefield locate 2011. It's four hexes south of the town of Litchfield. That's Litchfield there. There, 2011. Um, if the first armor battalion is not already selected, it is selected. We know it because it's over there in the, the box there. Um, oops, 2011. All right, um, move the cursor to hex 2011 or near enough. The cursor has a green key line. Not sure what that means. The cursor has a green green key line. So the first armor battalion can move to this hex this turn. Well, it's, it is a green marching soldier. Um, choosing its own path delineated by green arrows that consumes the fewest number of operations points. Once the move is complete, okay, so click on the destination hex. There we go. He moves, green arrows. Um, once the move is complete, look in the unit control area. Um, Okay, there's the undo button. Um, is now activated by clicking on it. You can take back the last move you just made. Boom. Oh, that's nice. It still shows. Um, okay. Um, so let's move him there. And unselect him. Our units consume operation points which is what um, actually I will undo it I'll unselect them and I'll select it again like that okay so units consume operations points to move each unit has its own allotment each turn so very um, on map conditions and supply you can find out how many OPs a unit has in the unit display area here uh, look for the linked yellow and red arrows. I guess they mean these ones, I guess. Um, the first armor battalion has 18. Okay, that must be the 18 there. 18 OPs available for normal use. It can use up to 30. That's must be that 30 um, OPs by activating extended movement. Um, but if it does so, it will not be able to do anything else. To refresh your memory, open the train effects. Um, train effects CRT screen, and you can see how many OPs are used to enter each type of terrain. Must be these for dry and mud. So, for example, going through forest in dry for track would be five points. All right, select uh, first armor battalion again. Okay, it's already selected, unselected, selected again. This time, position the movement cursor behind enemy lines, but not on an enemy unit. So let's go there. Um, let's see. The unit finds this, um, but not on, click on the location. So let's do up there. Oh, behind enemy lines. I guess they mean like that. All right. Um, unit finds the best path to that destination and moves towards it. Um, that section of the route, which can be traveled this turn, is described by green arrows. The remainder is described by red arrows. Click undo. We're going through everything here so far. 
Uh, if a unit uses all of its available OPs, it will be deselected automatically at the end of its move, otherwise it will remain selected rather than using the binoculars button to deselect the unit. Then selecting a new one, there is a handy shortcut. Holding down the control key when you select a new unit will automatically deselect any, one, any unit currently selected. So um, that one selected. I'm going to hold down control and select this one. Yeah, now it's the 9th Infantry. Now it's selected and the 1st Armor is deselected. Um, go ahead. I right, move all your units anywhere you wish. All right, so let's so let's do that. Um, let's go. I bet you I could have moved that whole stack. Let's try moving this stack. So I'm going to select it there, and then I'm going to select, yep, yeah, I tapped the space button, space bar, to select all of them. Now, yeah, can move as a stack. Excellent. There we go. That's good. All right. Um it's artillery now yeah. leave it leave it put. That's interesting. Is that a supply unit? First core. Huh. Let's look at order of battle. Is it sh support? First core A, unit on map at 9-11. Unit arriving. Huh. So that must be the supply unit. All right, moving all these units, and there we go.